Excellence, Mesdames, Messieurs, bonsoir. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you, Chair, even if he's not here, for offering me the infinite uh, privilege of addressing such a distinguished audience after three days of intensive debates. First and foremost, what global governance before the uncertain realities and the fractures that shake the world, before the deconstruction that Trump is doing of uh, states and also uh, of withdrawing from agreements with all the discredit this bestows upon US leadership. There are obviously the risk of protectionism with losses, significant losses that have been announced yesterday for both the Americans as well as for the partners, uh, starting with the Canadian neighbor, namely the Mexican uh, as well as the Korean neighbors, with the China that's uh, because of the growth of its investments, internationally speaking, and before its uh, the new great noises capacity of Russia and the uncertainties of the old continent exacerbated by the Brexit, but also the uh, radical uh, Islam, but also in view of uh, the rejuvenating dynamism of Macron, as well as uh, the great leadership of uh, Angela Merkel. So we could uh, reinvigorate Europe, but uh, could we do so without reshuffling the Mediterranean and rebuilding the Mediterranean where we share both the prosperity, the security, but also the contingency with the bankruptcy of the Mediterranean. It is then an imperative uh, to address uh, the powerful transnational networks, uh, namely those uh, that are in charge of the complex links of all kinds of uh, traffic and smuggling, starting with uh, um, the smuggling of weapons and drugs, including kids that are delivered to prosperity and to forced labor. We then need to imperatively attack the various sources and the endogenous factors of this organized crime, we know that the transnation of the Middle East, of the terrorist groups affiliated to both ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the existing links with local terrorist groups through Northern Africa, namely through Libya and via the Sahel, uh, from the Shabab to Boko Haram, and they're all threatened a region which is extremely vulnerable and fragile with an to obviously need to hope that the EU African Conference will address this else, namely youth and employment and their development for young people that will choose to either join migration or terrorist groups or mafia gangs. Of course, I take note of the will of Mr. Macron so to increase uh, or to dedicate 0.5 of the French GDP to development which uh, sends us back to the 70s, where 0.7 can only be reached out by Scandinavian countries. We therefore need energetic, vivid responses to disallow uh, the enshrinement of those stakeholders with the multiplication of narco states, like it is the case in Africa. Such a strategic partnership is clearly awaited, and I hope that the Abidjan summit won't uh, frustrate us. It is my my delight uh, that my country is seizing and capturing this problematic by developing an exhaustive uh, global strategy, which uh, will, of course, address such epiphenomena, but also to seek to uproot uh, such phenomena, because as long as you don't give societies the real stakes, you are not providing 
the sustainable grassroots of any endeavor for security and stability. And this is what we're trying to do here in Morocco, thanks to the ambitious uh, program of democratization. However, the path is still long and is thorny. So with uh, the escalating uncertainties, and that's the only certainty we have, uh, as well as the break through speed that we're having with some benefits, of course, for the most powerful and better performing, but with incommensurable risks for the majority and mainly the most vulnerable. What are the parades? There are not many. There is, of course, universal revenue, and we know where it has led Mr. Benoit Hamon, but there is also the fundamental education. But what education? When we know the children that go to school today, did actually work in professions and jobs that didn't exist in the past, so how to prepare those children and how to recycle half of the adults that are IT illiterate in order to avoid what Marc Benyov has qualified as being the digital refugees, those that will be forced into exile because they don't have the digital capacity to find out a job and that are going to further make heavy the burden of the refugees. Before the inevitable and the irresistible escalation of those extremists and extremisms, so we have resources in the Arab Muslim countries. We do share this cultural readiness to face such challenges and to find out ways and solutions out of this deadlock. Examples from Africa have been alluded to, and I would like to speak about the different um, divorces that have taken place, and I would like to speak about Saudi Arabia and uh, with uh, the um, transfer of power to the young uh, Saudi Arabian prince and who would like to install a kind of revolution detrimental uh, to the uh, Saudi Arabian economy with 500 million, with uh, drinking water, smart cities, uh, artificial uh, intelligence, entertainment, nothing is forgotten or falls into oblivion, but also with ambitious reforms, including societal reforms, and of course uh, that are are geared towards women, and of course, reverting to the moderate Islam, which is an extraordinary divorce with the two rigorous Islam that was practiced by this ultra conservative country. So, what are the risks at stake with 11 princes in prison? So, for former ministers that are being heard, isn't this going to be one more factor of instability? Anyway, he takes the risk, and that's a fundamental necessary change with, once again, uncertain results. To end with women, you, of course, understand that in this domain, uh, these are, of course, the creatures that lag behind, and unfortunately, they are the large, big absentees in this very form. So this. Um, we have the mitigation with the bad news, so we know the Western scandal and how it revealed what everyone knew, even if we chose to turn our backs, i.e. the extreme vulnerability of women, even uh, among the most powerful and the richest. And of course, we need uh, to wait for 2040 for parity to be achieved. So good news in Saudi Arabia. So so that's uh, breakthrough news, women's empowerment through driving a car, uh, quite symbolic, but mainly through lifting the custodianship that was imposed on women. And, um, but of course, uh, 
in the tribal society that the Saudi Arabian is, where it's going to be very difficult to get into practicalities because even the boldest and most courageous won't be able to denunciate their own tribes and uh, their own uh, families. So the Weinstein scandal has allowed uh, for uh, words to be spoken, however, verbal inflation shouldn't uh, bestow discredit on women. Uh, so we need to reassure the strong sex for uh, real partnerships uh, to be uh, conducive to building better futures. Uh, to end with a light-hearted remark, all this didn't spare Morocco, so uh, secretaries of state uh, have rebelled against their ministers, uh, often belonging to the same political party because they felt that they were discriminated against and deprived of the necessary instruments they are in need of in order to um, put into practice their prerogatives. It's highly symbolic because women in Morocco do have uh, real progress, do real stakes to preserve because thanks uh, to the encounter of two legitimacies, we have succeeded in a real cultural revolution that remains uh, pending, i.e. the encounter of two legitimacies, the bottom-up approach with the women's uh, rights advocates uh, since the 90s, uh, with the creation of the first uh, association for fighting um, uh, against HIV AIDS, women lawyers and attorneys uh, that uh, oppose GBV uh, with the association of Mrs. Shanna that played host to single mothers, and of course that will, uh, created a snowball effect with women's uh, um, advocates uh, uh, and work from grassroots uh, level and that allowed for, uh, of course, uh, an outpouring of controversies, but this debate couldn't be shunned, including uh, that on sexual misery in Muslim countries where extramarital relations are, of course, indicted and punished and penalized. And I would like, uh, by way of conclusion, to finish with a light-hearted remark, I would like to congratulate Asma al Marabut because women's activism is further supported by research, academic research, and we have a remarkable woman, Asma al Marabut, that's chairing the Center uh, for Women inside the uh, Association of Ulemas, i.e. religious scholars, that won the 2014 award, and she has just won the Atlas Prize that the French Embassy offers to Morocco for her book entitled Islam and Women that I highly recommend you read for you to better understand the intricacies of this East that seems so simple. Thank you for your attention.